Yes guys, how's it going? Welcome back to a new video. Hope you guys are all enjoying your morning. Uh, grab yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, slice of toast, as we've got plenty to get through in today's video. After late last night, Paul Mitchell, the Newcastle um, Sporting Director, dropped the bombshell interview that we've been waiting for with regard to Newcastle United's transfer window, saying uh, that the plans put in place for the window were not fit for purpose, that it was effectively gay he or no one, um, and I think as you know, thrown a few um, daggers in this interview as well. So we'll get into all of that before we do. Be sure to go ahead uh, to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As I mentioned, it's the international break, so it'll be a bit of time off, but it's not when Newcastle's involved. There's always something to talk about. And I will say, I like it. I, I like that Paul Mitchell has reported, I think it was like an hour and a half, two hour interview. I would have loved it if there's an, a whole interview was just on the Newcastle YouTube. It's not... And I think possibly because of some of the stuff he said, it's not. Uh, but it was for the written press. So it was the Daily Mail, Telegraph, all the usual guys have basically all released their reports late last night. So I like it. I like that he's come out. I think it's what we needed. We needed to hear it. But I also think he hasn't been shy with it. Uh, and I think he's kind of also like double-crossed some of the stuff that Eddie Howe has said. And we'll, we'll let you guys can let me know what you think. Starting off talking about communication. Uh, Eddie Howe himself... We know Eddie Howe is in communication, you know, we're not we're not silly, but Eddie Howe takes that stance in his interviews that he's not in communication. No, nothing to do with me, the guys are working on that and and, and pushes. Paul Mitchell just to totally pushed that to one side and went, no, no, I'm in a conversation with Eddie Howe every day, uh, to, to, sometimes to an hour or, or more. And they even if they don't get a chance to talk, they'll, we'll, they'll WhatsApp throughout the day. So straight away, I think there's a some sort of, President set there that Paul Mitchell's here to tell the truth and and beyond, which again, which is what I like about it. I don't know how Eddie Howe might feel about some of the comments made, considering he's tries to take that step back, tries not to be too forward with his answers. Um, where he's totally you know pushed Eddie to one side and gone, no, no, he's well, he's basically saying, you know, he's he's not he's lying. You know, Eddie Howe does talk to me. He, I don't you know. So uh, yeah, thoughts on that down below, but. Generally speaking, it was very good. He talks about Eddie Howe um, and interest from England as well. We'll get into that. Um, he said that he wants to keep Eddie Howe. I think he's got he's got great potential. He talks about the fact that he's done so well over the last few years. He talks about the fact that interest of another club is compliment. You know, if somebody's interested in your manager, it must mean they're doing a good job, which I totally agree with. However... Like most of this interview, <laughs> he wasn't shy to say that he's, however, he's not scared of losing someone. And in the grand scheme of the Newcastle United project, it's, you know, this isn't quoted, but it's 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 something that you possibly expect to see as we go. And we've, we've seen it already, as I mentioned. We've seen Amanda leave, we've seen a lot of backroom staff leave. And, you know, in reality, I'm hoping this Newcastle... I mean, Paul Mitchell goes on to say, you know, judgment five years with regard to transfers. And we'll come on to that in a second. But it's the same with us, you know, I, I very much doubt, you know, hopefully when I'm in St. James's Park, when I'm 80, Eddie Howe won't be the manager then. Uh, and I think we hope to see Eddie Howe be manager, certainly for the short term, long term. Who knows, long, long term. But you think it possibly will change, whereas I think this, like, the, act, the sporting director um, is, is possibly more of a, the idea that they'll be here longer and managers could change. But yeah, so he bigs Eddie Howe up. And says that it's a compliment that England want him, but that he's not scared of losing them. So there you go, Eddie. Thanks very much. Uh, he talks about the transfer policy not being fit for purpose. So I think a dig. I mean, he does talk about the owners at one point. He talks about the the ambition of the PIF and what they want to do. He talks about uh, PSR as well. Obviously, not a big fan of that. And I am looking at my notes over here as well. He says the transfer policy is not fit for purpose. Um, and he and he and he said that. He came into a pre-delivered strategy, so I, I like I like this because he is telling us the truth. He's saying, you know what, I came in here. They already had a plan set up, whether that was Eddie Howe, PIF. Um, look, as I mentioned, Amanda and Murdoch aren't there anymore, so you know who's who's doing it. Um, Dan Ashworth was it his plan, and he's bloody bogged off and left us with a dud. So, so I like that he's being honest. But he's also like taking the responsibility away from himself. He pretty much says, you know, I came in um, seven weeks later 
and you know what a man a man to come in and go you got to do this you got to do that when there's already people running the show so he's, he's, I like that he's come in and said you know it wasn't good enough and we'll have to make it better that's what we want to hear but he's also kind of said you know it wasn't what me <laughs> it wasn't my plan it was already a plan when I got here um, yeah, he said, come into a pre-delivered strategy. He says, we need to be cleverer. Um, you know, he said, it's, it's his responsibility to get it right. So he, he does take the responsibility of that, saying that going forward, he goes on to say, you know, judge me in five years. Judge me in five years. I'll, I'll get it right next time. So who knows? Was it Ashworth who had the, the policy that wasn't working? I mean, in terms of the policy, he talks about player training, you know, and that's something that Darren Eels has, has banged on about since the start. And we haven't really done it. Um... He says that we haven't sold players, which we have. You know, we sold Maxi, we sold Wood. I mean, at the start of this window, uh, we sold Minty and Anderson. So we have sold players, but I think he's he's kind of making a point that we haven't done it enough. Um, he says that other. Uh, he said, "What was, was it, 250 million net spend, and we've, we've never we've never sold anyone." You know, so we have sold people, but I think the principle stands that we haven't sold enough. We haven't been active enough, and we, we haven't let go of the likes of Miggy. We've got like seven goalies. Like, in what world is Dubravka not still here, really? And no offence to him at all, because he has been great, and we love him for what he's done, but we brought goalies in on the assumption that these people are leaving, <laughs> and they didn't. Um, Trippi, I don't want to say stay now. I mean, at this point, he may as well stay, but I think it was heavily rumoured that, that Trippi was going to go as well, and then he didn't. He compared us to what other clubs are doing. Obviously, we've seen what Chelsea have done this window. Well, they've basically sold two hotels to themselves. That's how they got around PSR. Chelsea sold some hotels to their sister company. Why has Newcastle not sold the stack um, to uh, Big Yass's best mate or whoever? You know, why haven't we sold the car park for 100 million to sell her? Why don't we? And then we've got Manchester United who got a £40 million um, reserve because somebody was unwell and one of the... Like, it, it, the problem is we don't know what the rules are. You know, we don't know what the rules are. What can and can't you do? Can we sell the bloody, you know, plant pots around the back of the... Um, around the back of the stand? Or can we sell that little fence off? Or what, you know, what's going on? You don't know. But I think it's, it stands to point that we need to be cleverer. We need to work out what's going on. And we need to be better. And that's what I said. He said, judge me on five years... And he'll get it right. Um, he talks about the targets. And, and this is the, the big one, really. He talks about Mark Gahey without actually saying the words Mark Gahey. He said that we had a key target um, in dialogue. So that's basically him and Eddie talking backwards and forwards on WhatsApp every day, despite what Eddie said, about their one target, Mark Gahey. And this is when he says that and he said it was very, Eddie was very clear uh that he, he wanted to make sure he added value to the squad. Which, you know what, I, I, will, I will give him props for that. I, I will agree. Because it, when they're fully fit, Shaw, Botman, as centre... Let's just talk centre-back only. Like, that's... I mean, that's incredible. You could go as far as say as that's possibly two of the best centre-backs together in, in the league. Um, Dan Byrne, the way he's playing, has been amazing. Crafty has shown exactly what he can be. So I will give... We've already got a fair few players in that position. And if you're going to do it, you, you need to make be better than what you, you've already got. There's no point of spending £50 million on a player who... Go, no point of spending £20 million on a goalkeeper who will end up on a loan out or never play. You know, if, if you're going to do it, spend it on a player that it's going to be better. So I will back Eddie Howe on that. However, the, the, the way it's kind of written up is that it was Mark Eheer or no one you know he, he's the only player who could possibly make us any better which I don't agree with I think there was other players in the market it's like oh, right winger anyone we're talking about centre back here in this and Mark Gahey right winger anyone you're telling me that there's nobody better in the market than Murphy and Almiron you know Chiesa went to Liverpool for 12 million and appreciate the wages are probably high but there's there's people out there it just sounds like Gahey was the only option um, so I will back Eddie Howe saying that we want to make sure it adds value. I will give him the green light on that. But saying that we couldn't, that was the only option, I think, is, is actually mad. Uh, and Paul Mitchell doesn't hide away from that either. <laughs> he says, it, it, wasn't up, it wasn't up to me. You know, after seven weeks to say, let's do this, let's do that, it didn't feel appropriate because he was just the supporting role. So there you go. You know, um... 
as I say, I like that Paul Mitchell's come out and been honest and said that, you know, that was the situation we're in. That was what Eddie wanted. I, but, but you know, then saying, you know, I wasn't comfortable with it and it wasn't up to me is kind of going, yeah, you know, you know how I didn't buy anyone? Eddie, you can take that one. See you in the presser next week because there's going to, no doubt, the journalists will be back onto Eddie Howe asking, you know, it's I don't want it to happen. I want to see this as a nice, friendly, honest and open interview. But what will happen is, you know, all these little, I wouldn't say they're di- jibes or digs, but you could take them that way. I can't wait for the journalist to ask Eddie Howe about them in a week's time. But yeah, he pretty much says that it's gay he or nothing, uh, and it was a decision that Eddie Howe took, you know? Um, he went, as I say, he went on to talk about the scouting and, and saying that we need to, uh, uh, that it is an extremely competitive area. I think, you know, the amount of teams out there scouting these players. Um, and he, and he all actually says, so this is it. So he says that the scouting needs to improve. It needs to be bigger. It needs to be better. It needs to be newer. And I get it. I like that. We want to be out there. We want to have a scout in every country. We want to have a scout in every league, every, um, you know, every area, every local area around Newcastle is going to have a scout each. You know, we've got to be massive. Let's turn this into a worldwide project. So we aren't just scouting Mark Gahey because he lives down the road and we know his is Nan or whatever. We, we are looking all around the world for these players. That's what I want to see. But he also was like, uh, we, but not, not just local, you know, not just local, as if to say that that's only what Newcastle would do. And Newcastle were only looking locally for for players, really, and weren't further afield. So, so I think it's a, a bit of a, a point at Newcastle that we need to do more. But I, I also think, you know, for the fact that really we've, we've brought a lot of English players since we started. And we've kind of always said that, or I've always thought it was Eddie Howe's policy in terms of he likes English players because they know they know the league, they know the football that's played, they know the language easily, you know. Um, but whereas Paul Mitchell is actually kind of saying, well, it seems to be, it's not just because it's a preference, it's because it's the only place we've been looking for players. So I'm hoping that changes too. Um, so I will I will end it there. I'm trying to cover kind of the three or four main points from the interview that have come out. So you let me know your thoughts down below on Paul Mitchell. As I say, I think my my overall verdict of it is, well, it was a rubbish window. That's the overall verdict. Is that it's lovely for it to come out, but it, we still didn't do enough. However, I think it's good that he has come out. I think it's good that he's been honest. I think it's like, it's called it's called holding themselves responsible and providing some accountability because it means if we don't do it again in January we'll go do you remember that interview where you told us that it had all gone wrong but you were gonna fix it why haven't you fixed it yet so this is the thing it's, it's it's put on paper you know the reasons why it didn't work these are the things that we're gonna fix next time so I like all of that I wonder, I wonder how Eddie Al feels because <laughs> I do feel like Paul Mitchell saying it wasn't my responsibility it wasn't me it was somebody else. So so that part of it, I think, um, yeah, I don't know how to take it. Yeah, I like it still, I guess, because it's honest. But um, I think Eddie Howe's obviously quite a protective person and Paul Mitchell kind of hasn't been that way. So when you talk about how they get on and how they'll function together, I mean, Paul Mitchell saying he's not scared of losing someone. And anything, I think Paul Mitchell... I think, I think that's the thing. He's come in as a supporting role. You know, Eddie Howe was already here. He's already working the business. And if he and I, and I get it. I agree. If he walked into the room and gone, right, burst the door, right, Eddie, I'm in charge now. I mean, that's not going to help. So I think he was probably with operating with his hand or an arm tied behind his back for some degree. I think now that he's in and he's in, in, in and he's in his... He's, he's basically going to try and take over, really. And I think that's possibly a good thing. I mean, obviously, we, it should be a good thing after the way the, the window went. But, yeah, I'm going on now. Thoughts and comments down below. Enjoy your day. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you later.